Hiya, hiya. It's Joey Reynolds and a Reynolds wrap. Years ago when I uh, worked for Wayne Newton, I was the president of the company, and we put out a, just before I got there, he had an album on 20th Century Fox where I was creative director, and the uh, album was called Change of Heart. And I always said, that's really, that's really cool. What are you going to have Change of Heart? But yeah, this is not a transplant. We're talking about uh, the conscience of America and how people are now having and processing the race relations and things that are being forced upon us uh, present a pressure and some people don't handle it real well. You know, plus we have the kind we listen, a lot of things are done right now to cover up the, uh, the high price of gas. <laughs> uh, no, no secret, you know, I mean, when people are in the spotlight and they are being featured, we're not talking about the things that are really affecting everybody, which is the gas prices right now. I mean, that's the truth. And the other thing is uh, the shortage of food and, and uh, distribution and stuff like that, plus the airlines and whether they want to tell you or not that it's about the vaccinations and the pilots being shifted around. Uh, this is all business, you know. So we have a separation of business and America is a business, okay? It's a company. This should be USA Incorporated because it's run like a corporation. You got a president of the corporation, but who's the CEO? You need a you need a chairman of the board. You got the president, you got all of the board members, but you don't have a chairman of the board. And I don't mean Frank Sinatra. We used to call him that, incidentally, if you're old enough. But somewhere along the line, we have to wake up to the fact that there are people who have been working on this for a long time and not being given any credit besides the guy from Starbucks, Schultz, five years ago, put this out in all of the stores, the race together. And everybody made fun of him back then. What was it, five, seven years ago? And he put it out with Larry Kramer, who is the publisher of USA Today. And they put out these rules and guidelines of how we could change our hearts. Because that's what needs to change, not the behavior like this, uh, the coach in Las Vegas got fired because of his email. What, what are you going to do? You're going to check everybody's email? You know what happens on the crime shows? They always go to a DNA and they check your hardware to see what you've been watching on your computer, to see if you have porno in your heart, see if you have uh, some sort of a, a, an idea of, of hate in your, in going on in your system. Well, you know, if, they, if, they, if we went back to everything that I ever did, I would, I'll tell you, I would be, I, I don't know, I would, I would be erased from the planet, lifetime in jail. I had to get sober. I'm sober 40 years now and uh, drugs and alcohol. You know, if I was doing drugs back then, I got arrested. It would look bad. I was a popular figure on the, on the radio and television. <clears throat> you know, I mean, you, you don't want to have that. Uh, but but there, there's, a, there's some sort of a meanness about taking someone down because of their email. Because you are maybe jealous. See, the change of heart would be for, for the person's who, is, who are taking this man to task to examine their own conscience. You know, I mean, everybody's got their own boogie. Uh, some people are, are happy he's out of the way because they didn't get what they wanted from him when he was a coach. And they don't like his style. They don't like where he's going with the team. They don't like what he's done and how he's left someone out. And, and they're going to go over the guy's email and see what, 11, 10 years ago, was it, that he wrote these offensive things? And, and he... he probably does have these feelings. We all have something going on that we don't want to talk about because in the 12-step meeting rooms, the slogan is, we're only as sick as our secrets. So if you have a secret like that, you know, your race relations secret, you're not going to change because somebody uh, talks about it on television. You're not going to change because you see all black people uh, doing movies and TV and you get used to, uh, to having the, the uh, complexion. Uh, even Lego today has gone cross-gender. Do you know that? Legos, they, they have cross-genderized. Now, and the new Barbie, and, and uh, they've had the new Barbie and Ken doll, who, who have they just made bisexual? One of these toys they just made bisexual. I mean, you know, people keep wanting to move things over to what their field of desire and their own interest is uh, politically and morally. We have shifted from being a theological society to an ideology society. So what we're trying to do now is separate not the Ten Commandments and what commandments are followed or what our families have taught us, but we're trying to separate at this point in time what our belief system is about politics. 
So uh, the co corporations, uh, usually uh, if, if there's money involved, uh, there's going to be a different kind of a contest than there is if there's no money involved. That's why I like a lot of the uh, meetings in these uh, recovery rooms are not, there's no money involved. There's no office being held. <clears throat> and the point is that uh, there's nothing to be gained but sobriety itself in the AA uh, mo movement, for instance, AA, OA, EA. If it ends in A, I belong to it. I even belong to AAA. So here's the thing. Now, on your race relations check, this is really interesting. This was put out by Starbucks now in all the stores because Schultz wanted us, we, the public, to talk to the people he had working for him, and he wanted the people working for him who are also of color and of different nationalities to exchange with the customers. Now, instead, the company, uh, Schultz is out of the way, I think, as chairman, but the company is going into opening these boutique coffee shops where you go in and you pay $5 for a cup of coffee. Not that it's a, a latte, but it's a blend from uh, different countries. I saw a show this morning on television about slave labor, black kids in Africa who are, and well-spoken incidentally, good English, because the British did do a good job with teaching English, English wherever they went, and the same with French. You know, the French, whenever they conquered a territory, they taught, they, they, they taught the language and educated. We did not do that here in slavery in this country. You know, big mistake to uh, keep people down. And uh, obviously, that was the mistake. The mistake was when we had slavery in this country, nobody got educated of the slaves, and, and they were not promoted into, into uh, a higher course. <coughs> Clearing my throat. I'm not part of that, but I, I don't know if I would have been. I don't know. Uh, here's the, chase, ch the checklist now on race relations. You ask yourself this, where do I stand? Use these conversation starters with your friends and family. He printed all of this, come on. This is Starbucks putting this out publicly in the, in the stores for us to go over this long before we had uh, the, the black movement and George uh, Foreman and all this other business, you know. Uh, now here's the questions. My parents had friends of a different race. I have, diff uh, I have friends of a different race. My children have friends of a different race. Members of a different race live on the block of my apartment building. I most often talk to someone of another race. And you have to uh, uh, check off at work, church, home, school, shopping. And then on the other side, uh, that's number one through five. Number six is in my Facebook stream, what percentage are of a different race? You ask yourself all these questions. Number seven, in the past year, I've been to the home of someone of a different race how many times? Number eight, in the past year, someone of a different race has been in my home how many times? Number nine, at work, we have managers of blank different races. Ten, in the past year, I have eaten a meal with someone of a different race how many times? So uh, these are the questions. What, uh, what is America's greatest challenge? Uh, we have racially evolved, but we don't have a change of heart. You have to have a change of heart. You have to want something to be different inside of ourselves. And the way to do this is to follow the people who are the great teachers by modeling, not by talking, even like me, you know, I'm talking right now, but uh, by modeling, by living that way. And if you, if you walk like you talk, they say, uh, then you're going to have a, uh, be a better influence. You know, influence, they call them influencers. And, and these, are, these are the people who are on the internet who guide you in a certain subject matter because they are the ones who have the most following. Because we love having strength in numbers. America is a, con a country of challenged competitors. We love to see number one, love to see who won, how you won, how many people are behind you, how many people bought this, how many people love you. And we go on and on and on with all these surveys, all these numbers. Uh, what's the presidential uh, uh, rating? How much uh, do we love this guy? Uh, how much do we love the other person that was president? And it goes on and on and on and on. You know, and the, uh, the latest thing I saw today <laughs> was uh, Nancy Pelosi talked to the Pope, so he must be a communist. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> female Pope. <laughs> I saw a woman. Uh, she, she could have been a female Pope. i got to show you this picture. Uh, she, it was the opening of the Met and the costume party, and there was a girl who had lots of cleavage and a big Pope hat. <laughs> well, I know. It's all commercial. I said at one time that the Pope ought to be sponsored by Pope <laughs> Anyway, that's it. It's 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 just it's just a change of heart that we're we're after, not 
not a change of behavior. The change of behavior is only cosmetic. Uh, I, I behave a certain way because I want something, but if I really feel a certain way, then I'm going to behave a certain way because I know something about me, about myself. And to thine own self be true. How about that? That's a 15th century statement. I think nothing's really changed about the uh, nature of man except for one foolish thing. We got, uh, we got too much communication. We, <laughs> we've become too, too communicative. <laughs> Our social networking has become a gossip post. And I think that uh, radio and television ought to go in the direction that I'm going in right now, which is to sit there and talk about this stuff, even though me with one camera, no big production, no script, no writers, uh, no plan, just sit here and, and be yourself for uh, 10 or 15 minutes. Do it every day. That's your blood check. If you uh, want to see that new machine they have to see, that you can see your sugar count in your system and find out how your body is going. I want to know how my behavior is, how my conscience is, how, how, how the inside of me really works, not that uh, my health. It's uh, part of mental health. So that's it. It's a, uh, it's a challenging little thing I did today. But I want to congratulate Starbucks for trying to break the color barrier years ago, and no one wanted it. It's a Reynolds wrap.